to the Five Borough Chamber of Commerce first annual Minority and Women's Business Enterprise Awards celebration presented by TD Bank. I am Ralph Bombaca, Senior Vice President for Commercial Banking in New York City, and on behalf of the bank and Peter Meyer, New York City Market President for TD, we are thrilled to once again partner with our, with our outstanding Chambers of Commerce. We applaud the executive directors for their hard work and dedication to the success of our communities, and this event is just one of the examples of their great work. At TD, we have enjoyed a long and successful partnership with each of the chambers, and know that TD will continue to support our business owners directly through our convenient banking services and through our work with the chambers and the New York City community at large. At TD Bank Group, we believe diversity is the key to success in the competitive marketplace. Our commitment to diversity is a fundamental element of how we do business today and in the future. One example of that is TD's North American Supplier Diversity Program, which focuses on creating a level playing field for suppliers certified as being owned by a member of a diverse group and who are interested in providing goods and services to TD Bank Group. I'd like to acknowledge in the audience this evening public advocate Letitia James, The New York City Commissioner for the Department of Small Business Services, Maria Torres Springer. And New York City Commissioner for the Department of Community, Community, uh, Consumer Affairs, Julia Menon. And I've been given the honor of introducing our MC for the evening, the Emmy Award winning journalist, Linda Becerra. Linda is a champion of consumer and small business issues and has been influential in helping to shape the conversation on issues that affect the Hispanic community. Linda also is dedicated to helping young people achieve their potential through, the port, through her board service at Let's Get Ready, a nonprofit that serves the needs of our New York City students. Linda's bio is in the program this evening, and it is my pleasure to introduce Linda Becerra. Thank you very much, Ralph, and I want to thank all of you be for being here tonight. Um, some of you may not know, but uh, I actually hosted a, a program called Hispanics Today uh, many moons ago on NBC, and it, was air it aired across the NBC stations uh, across the country, and it was all focused on entrepreneurs like yourselves here. So it is indeed my pleasure. I've worked with many chambers of commerce all across the country, so it's really my honor to be here to honor 10 terrific men and women, women and minority-owned businesses from all across the boroughs. Our city, as we know, is all made up of a very diverse population, which is also reflected in the ownership and the entrepreneurship of all of the small business owners. We're still a city and country attracting first-generation immigrant entrepreneurs who come here with a dream, looking to work hard and enjoy the fruits of their labor. And their families carry on the tradition in second and third generations, developing their own businesses and contributing to the fabric of our neighborhoods. So congratulations tonight to the five borough chambers for recognizing the MWBE community and for honoring these individuals tonight. I hope this will be an annual event for many years to come. It is certainly way overdue. Right now, though, before we get started with all of the presentations for the evening, I'd like to welcome Maria Torres Springer, the New York City Commissioner for the Department of Small Business Services, who'd like to say a few words to all of you. Maria? Thank you, Linda, for that kind introduction. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm very thrilled to join you all tonight um, for the first annual Five Borough Chamber of Commerce MWBE Awards. Many thanks to TD Bank, to our DCA Commissioner, Julie Menon, um, and of course, Public Advocate Letitia James, um, and to the five um, Chambers of Commerce for coming together tonight to put a spotlight on the city's MWBE community for your strong partnership, um, and support on so many of our programs and really all of the incredible work that you do for New York City small businesses. Without a doubt, this work is central to the administration's goals and to the health of our city and our economy. Mayor de Blasio has tasked SBS and all agencies with a singular charge, and that's to fight inequality in all its forms and all its fronts and to create a city where we can rise together. And we know 
that a major lever we have in this fight is our own spending, which is why we must ensure that the city's procurement reflects the great diversity of business owners in this city. And I'm happy to report that we're making great progress, um, but also believe that there is really a profound opportunity to do more and to do better. So in the past year, the city certified close to 1,000 new MWBEs, bringing our total to 4,000. And we saw a 57% increase in contracts to MWBEs from about 440 million in FY13 to 690 million in FY14. Importantly, we have also integrated MWBE goals into major initiatives like the city's affordable housing plan um, and Sandy Resiliency and Recovery initiatives. And we continue to offer and build on programs to help strengthen the performance and capacity of MWBEs. Some of you have already explored how the city can help and have utilized services that we offer, but I encourage everyone to see um, how the city can assist your firm grow and succeed, either through one-on-one -on -one assistance, networking opportunities, business education courses, and workshops. We can help you certify as an MWBE, become bondable, find teaming opportunities, secure capital, connect with contracting opportunities in both the public and the private sector, and attend executive management courses to help develop a growth plan for your company. And of course, every year we have um, an amazing procurement fair. This past November, more than 600 certified firms attended and networked with representatives of over 70 city and state agencies. And moving forward, we will continue to work harder and smarter um, for you by building the pipeline of MWEs increasing the city's performance on contract opportunities, and really creating policies that foster the growth of the city's economy through MWBE participation. But tonight um, is really about, of course, our wonderful honorees. I'd like to congratulate all of the awardees for their accomplishments across the five boroughs. As MWBEs, as entrepreneurs in this city, you create local jobs, you anchor communities, you strengthen our economy, and you really help lift up neighborhoods. So I applaud you all for all that you do and look forward to working together to continue to build a city where everyone has the opportunity to rise together. Thank you very much and enjoy the evening. Thank you so much. And we have the commissioner helping with small business services. And we also have another city leader here who's helping so many consumers. I'm um, happy to say already we've worked on a couple of stories together. She's really getting the message out there about all the help and services that are available to all of us here as New Yorkers. So right now I'd be, I'm happy to introduce Julie Menon, the New York City Commissioner for the Department of Consumer Affairs. Julie. Thank you so much, Linda, for that very kind introduction, and it's wonderful to be here today. I'm so pleased to be here today to celebrate the successes of the women and men who are being honored today, and congratulations to all the wonderful honorees. I also want to thank Ralph Bambuca and everyone at TD Bank for sponsoring tonight's event, and also my thanks not only to Linda Beccaro, as I mentioned, but also to my colleague, Commissioner Maria Torres Springer, for all of her outstanding work, and to public advocate Tish James. And finally, I want to thank our outstanding leaders at the Chambers of Commerce for all the work they're doing each and every day to help small businesses all throughout the city. It's something, obviously, that's deeply important to Mayor de Blasio and to all of us here. For many years, I owned and operated a small business. I owned a restaurant that was located a few blocks away from here. And so I vividly remember going to industry events at the time and being one of the few women in the room. And yet I understood then, as I understand now, that our city is literally brimming with talented and energetic women and men of all different backgrounds. They have great ambitions, but oftentimes find themselves outside the traditional networks that help entrepreneurs to get started. That's unfortunate for those entrepreneurs, but quite frankly, it's even worse for our society as a whole. 
Sometime in the coming decades, we know that African Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans, and others will be the majority in the United States. And today, women are poised to comprise more than 50% of the workforce. But honestly, what that means to me is this, that it's vital that we find ways to help women and minorities succeed, because their success or failure will shortly be the success or failure of our economy as a whole. Of course, we already know this in New York City. I am the commissioner of the Department of Consumer Affairs, and we license more than 80,000 businesses in New York City cutting across 55 different categories. DCA enforces consumer protection laws. We mediate disputes between consumers and businesses. We educate businesses and the public, and we work to bring financial security to New Yorkers with low incomes through our Office of Financial Empowerment. That means that DCA has a special relationship with business owners of all different backgrounds. We know just how important you are to the success of New York City. There are many statistics I could cite, but I really wanted to cite just really one in particular. Today, about 40% of New York small businesses are immigrant-owned, and an astounding one in two employed New Yorkers is an immigrant. New York City is already where the United States is headed. So when Mayor de Blasio appointed me DCA commissioner last spring, I immediately directed the agency's procurement office to focus on finding great women and minority-owned vendors who could deliver fantastic goods and services to us at competitive costs. And I'm proud to say that DCA has found exactly what we're looking for. As of now, the agency is on track to double the number of contracts we offer to MWBEs, and judging by the service we are getting from our new vendors, DCA is much the better for it. President Kennedy once said that a nation reveals itself by the men and women it honors, and I think the same is true for a city. That's why it's important that we all take the time to celebrate and encourage minority and women entrepreneurs. The people being honored today look like our city, and when you succeed, our city and our country succeed with you. So in closing, I really want to thank the Chambers of Commerce for organizing this inaugural event, which I hope will continue for many years to come, and I want to congratulate all of the outstanding honorees tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. And uh, we're about to present uh, the awardees for this evening, but we just want to apologize for an error in reversing the awardees in your program between the Bronx Chamber and the Brooklyn Chamber. So just to clarify for the record, Sandra Erickson and Maria Rios are the awardees from the Bronx Chamber, and Vanessa Best and Abe Narvaez are from the Brooklyn Chamber. Sorry about that, but we will straighten it out here on the stage. Right now, I'd like to... Uh, Get uh, to business and welcome the five borough Chamber of Commerce executives who in turn will present the awards to their respective honorees. And we begin by representing the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. We have President Carlo Cesura. Carlo? Thank you very much. Let's give a big round of applause to our wonderful MC, of course. Uh, and thank you for doing this. Um, and of course, thank you to the commissioners who uh, really are leading the way for small businesses across the city, uh, Commissioner Menon, Commissioner Torres Springer, uh, Ralph Bombaca, and the entire TD Bank team, Peter Meyer, uh, New York market president, who's not here tonight. Um, I should say that for the second year in the row, TD Bank has funded the citywide neighborhood entrepreneurship program. Uh, through the Five Borough Chamber Alliance. And it's got a, a long name, it's a little hard to say, but the bottom line is what that does is allow the five of us and our respective staffs to go out into communities, uh, communities where there is great need for assistance, and really help businesses on the ground. And we're very excited that we have helped thousands of businesses because of that grant, Ralph, so we thank you. Um, and in particular, following Sandy, we were able to really roll up our sleeves and be able to hit neighborhoods in all five boroughs. So I'd like to give Ralph and Peter Meyer a big round of applause. Again, thank you for your support. And so I got to uh, announce the two honorees from Brooklyn, not the Bronx, although I know Lenny is jealous because he wants me to talk about the Bronx. 
Um, and I'd like to call up my board chair, Denise Arbasu, to join me as we present the awards. And I'd like to ask Vanessa Best and Abe Narvius to come on up also. I like to have honorees up here when I talk about you, so come on up. And you can give them a round of applause. So Vanessa Best is the president of Precision Healthcare Consultants. Uh, 20 years ago in 1995, Vanessa began a fledgling medical billing firm. She obtained her first contract with a doctor who opened his own practice. Um, and she really hit the ground running, as they say. Um, armed with 30 years experience, Vanessa now has established herself as an industry leader um, and is really the recipient of so many awards, uh, 2014's Top 50 Long Island Women in Business, uh, the Goldman Sachs Small Business 1000 Initiative Program. I can go on and on, but I won't. Um, one of the most interesting things is that as healthcare has continued to change um, and continued to really get confusing for many consumers, both individuals and businesses, Vanessa has used her experience to really lead the way. So Vanessa, on behalf of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce, Denise will present you with your award, and let's give her a round of applause. Congratulations. Thank you. Vanessa, don't go, because you're going to say a few words in two minutes. Um, Abe Narvaez, who I know for many, many years, he's the president and CEO of Bin Communications. A former Cisco engineer and IT project manager, Abe parlayed his experience into his own company, employing six with specializations in data and voice solutions and Wi-Fi installations, with a client base including Chase, Bank of New York and Bear Stearns, The Gap, Old Navy, I mean, I can go on and on. Abe has really become one of the chamber's most successful MWBE businesses. That's really what it's about, right? We want you to get certified. Uh, we want you to really come out and meet people. More importantly, we want you to make a lot of money because when you make a lot of money, then your membership goes up in the chamber, right? <laughs> right, guys? Uh, he's really committed to business, family, and community. He's a native Brooklynite, grew up in Park Slope, lives in Bay Ridge. Um, and he's really just uh, a perfect example of what someone who has risen up the ranks, who has worked hard, and who has built a successful career. So Abe, congratulations. And Denise is gonna present to you. So Vanessa, come on up. So I like to say my oh okay there you yeah. go okay <laughs> thank you very much to TD Bank for the five boroughs this is an amazing honor for my company Precision Healthcare uh, I could go on for quite some time but there's other people that would like to speak but just thank you for your support and I think this is a great venue for minorities and uh, also women here in our city and I look forward to doing great things for my business and working even closer with our chambers thank you. Abe. Uh, hi, I'm very humbled uh, to receive this award. Um, I want to thank TD Bank and all the other chambers for coming together, to put this great event together. Um, I especially want to thank uh, Denise and uh, Veronica Harris and Carl Sussura. Um I've watched you since you took over the chamber. I, I see the things you do, and um, I'm truly inspired. I want to tell you that. Uh, I'd like to thank my family, particularly my mom that's here. I, I thank you for your love and support. Hey, mom. <laughs> and I accept this award on behalf of my daughter and all of the other MBEs out there trying to make it. Thank you. And I, I do want to just thank my staff who really helped work on our end of this event. Uh, Ronnie, who's not here tonight, Melissa, Quinn, and Andrew. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo, and congratulations, Vanessa and Abe. 
Next, I'd like to bring up a fellow Puerto Ricano, the president of the Bronx Chamber of Commerce, Lenny Caro. Lenny. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. It's an important evening because not only do we recognize our honorees tonight, but it's more important the fact that they're certified now. So all of you tonight, it's an important thing that you should remember. The fact that you're now certified, the doors are not going to knock and give you the business. You have to look for it. But the fact that you're certified, that gives you that step above everybody else. So what you need to do is make sure you list yourself with all of the contracts that the city has. And if some of you have seen yesterday that the governor is now also getting involved. So now your certifications and some of you that have New York and New York State, doors are going to open. Don't think it's just going to come and knock on your doors. Look, bid, be a part of it because it's big. And I think the opportunities are only going to get better for both men and women minority companies. But tonight, we have a couple of our own from the Bronx. And I would like to bring up the president and CEO of Classico Maintenance, who I personally know and has sit on my board. Come on up, Maria. <laughs> Classico Maintenance is one full service organization. Not only do they do hospitals, buildings, schools, and military bases, they go from the little work and actually clean, clean my house. So I'm doing good with them. <laughs> I know they gave me a big bill, but it was all right. It was a mess. <laughs> Another thing, I understand what it's like for the double let David Letterman. With these lights, I can't see anybody. But more importantly, they make you look young. Oh, I like that. Maria and I go back a long time. And I've watched her build this business. Every time an opportunity came, she would call. And we would try to help. But a lot of time, it was her perseverance to get those jobs. When Yankee Stadium was built, she made sure she got there. When other buildings were being done, no matter what the dirt, the, whatever it took, Maria got there. So tonight, Maria, is your night. And follow your dream. Let me get you. You want to say a couple of words? Thank you. Good evening. I am honored to be part of the first Five Borough Chamber of Commerce Annual MWBE Awards. Uh, I would first like to thank TD Bank, Lenny Carroll, and the Bronx Chamber of Commerce for nominating me for this award. Thank you for your commitment to minority and women-owned business, businesses. I also wish to acknowledge all the other chambers, sponsors, and friends Congratulations to all the other honorees and special congratulations to my Bronx colleague and dear friend, Sandra Erickson. I want to thank my partner, Louis Rios, Steve Friedman, Senior VP of Operations, and my staff, friends, and family that are here tonight to support me. In particular, my sister, Trini, which is responsible for the successful woman that I am today. She was the first one in our family to be a businesswoman herself many years ago. She taught me to work hard and dream big. I thank you for all your love and support. As some of you may know, Classico has been in business for over 30 years, a full-service building maintenance company servicing commercial, residential, health care, and educational facilities in the tri-state area. We are certified by the state and city and numerous agencies and have been able to obtain many contracts through our MWBE status. Most recently, we were accepted into the MTA mentorship program. Last year was our most successful year to date and we are confident that this year will, will bring many, many more blessings as we look into the future. As a Bronx native, I pride myself in not only having a minority woman-owned business, but also employing women from my community and helping them achieve their independence. On behalf of Classico, Building Maintenance, my staff, and employees, I humbly accept this award. It means a great deal to me to be recognized. I am truly grateful for this honor. Thank you. You have to go to this spot. 
So for you and all know there's an odd spot here. We have to come on and answer just a second. Wow, it's an exciting night. And, and just think about this, guys. This is the five borough chambers. We're your borough chamber who's thought about thinking of really recognizing everyone here. That's what it's like to work with my colleagues. So I'd like to give them a round of applause. <laughs> the next young lady that's coming up is Sandra Erickson. Please join us up here, Sandra. My sister from another mother. Sandra, as you can read some of the bios, it is in real estate and development and taking care of buildings in the South Bronx. But this woman had a real tough task. She dominated a business that was primarily run by men. But she didn't stand down, she stood up. She made sure that they understood that a woman could do this job as well. And since 1984, she's built a great business. Not only alone, but she has her children involved, Danielle and Ron, who are here today. It's so important that when you're able to follow through and bring family into a business, that legacy still begins. And a great story that I'd like to mention, when she was getting her recognition and got certified by us about a year, year and a half ago, we recognize a number of them. At that event, her son came to the event and met his future wife, who he married now, and now is gonna have a baby. So hopefully they'll name it after the chamber, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> but Sandra, sister, come on up, come on up. Good evening, everyone. A special thanks to TD Bank for uh, sponsoring this event. I would like to give a special uh, thank you to my family who's here tonight, my husband and my two children, along with my staff, Brenda and Eldon. Uh, and I'd like to congratulate my fellow honorees, and of course, I was also gonna mention my very good friend, Maria Rios. It's amazing how not only Maria and I, but so many of the uh, chamber members we support each other and encourage each other, and it really means the, means the world to our businesses. I'd like to give a special thanks, of course, to Lenny Caro and also Michelle, the Chief of Staff of the Chamber. She was awesome at uh, helping you with the daunting tasks of the, uh, the certification process. She just made it all so easy, and I'm so grateful to her. And also all the help that the Chamber gives to support the MWBE community. I would like to give a special, special thanks to New York City, HPD, New York City, SBS, and the Minority Business Development Institute, as well as NASAFA, which is an affordable housing uh, group, for all the help and support they've given for the MWBE community, especially in the past year or so. They've helped to create uh, a, something called the Building Opportunities Initiative, in which uh, certified MWBE developers, mainly neighborhood developers, they meet uh, twice a month and they teach them the tools and training to expand their businesses. And uh, this has just been awesome for us. My daughter and I have been attending now since November and it's just amazing what we've learned. Many, many thanks to these agencies, uh, New York City, for, for assisting us. And again, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, to all of you tonight, thank you for being here. We'll continue with the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lenny, and congratulations, Sandra and Maria. And I'm so proud of the diversity of the industries that are represented here this evening, including some industries that have, uh, in, 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 in areas that have not been traditionally dominated by women. So it's wonderful to see uh, everything that's taken place. Congratulations on all the hard work and success here represented tonight. Right now, I'd like to bring up Nancy Plager, president of the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce, to present our Manhattan awardees. Nancy Plager.
Thank you, Linda, and thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. We're very excited about this program, and I know, uh, based on the success of the evening, my fellow chambers are going to be fighting to see who's going to host it next year in which borough, so stay tuned. We'll see where that goes. Um, we very much would like to thank our sponsors this evening as well. As Carla mentioned, with the great support of TD Bank and all of their bankers and fellow colleagues that work with us throughout the year on several programs, we'd like to thank you very much for sponsoring this first awards event. Also, Con Edison, um, UPS, and yes. And RT desserts, if you haven't had a chance to go out there and try those cupcakes, you better do that before you leave tonight. So we thank RT for bringing the desserts. We also like to thank Advantage and also GM Printing for helping with the program this evening. So thank you very much to everyone. Our first awardee from Manhattan is Ramon Ray. Ramon, you want to make your way up to the stage? While he's coming to join me, let me just tell you a little bit about Ramon. He is a consummate entrepreneur. He is passionate about helping small businesses grow by educating them about technology and marketing best practices. He is a best-selling author, journalist, and freelance writer, event producer, speaker, and MC, all rolled into one. Watch out, Linda. <laughs> His third book is Amazon.com bestseller, The Facebook Guide to Small Business Marketing. Ramon has shared the stage with celebrity entrepreneurs throughout the years and through his small business technology platform when I first met Ramon maybe 15 years ago, and even interviewed President Obama in the president's first ever live Google Hangout. And his recent entrepreneurial launch is Smart Hustle Magazine, featuring advice to all levels of executives and entrepreneurs. So make sure you go out and find this one. Um, but I think this all says it all in Ramon's bio, as in, your, uh, as in your program. He is not a comedian, but his audiences laugh. He is not a law enforcement officer, but he is a graduate of the FBI Citizens Academy. We never talked about that. He does not work for Sesame Street. Uh, but he loves to do puppet shows in developing countries. He is not a preacher, but he is a marketing technology evangelist. But Ramon, I think you forgot one thing in that bio, and that is he is not a college professor, but he has taught and helped hundreds of small businesses. Ramon, congratulations, all your successes. Um, wow, I'm so honored to be here, and uh, I guess I, I won't say anything about me. I didn't know we were speaking, but I wrote some notes down, and I think that I'll just say that to those people who say, um, I'm often asked, Nancy, um, you know, how do you, what do you get out of the chamber? Why do you join the chamber? Uh, those are the idiots who don't put anything into a chamber. So that's point one. You have to put in to get out. Um, I think also I want to thank my wife, Ronnie, who's right there uh, in, in the green. I think it's green on Battle of Colors in the first row. So thank you, sweetheart, for being here. And I think also I think any of us tonight and those of you in the audience who are successful, I think we wouldn't be where we are except surrounding ourselves with awesome people. So I'm just happy for my guests here today, Carla of Sapphire Businesses, uh, Cliff with Shark Branding, uh, Megan, who's my marketing assistant, um, Frida, who is an awesome business consultant, and others who are here. So I thank you for that. And I think the two other things I'll end with, Nancy, is to say that even the magazine I launched, a big thanks. I know TD Bank has been thanks, but uh, when I had a tax audit and I had no clue what to do, TD Bank was my home away from home to get me every single record I needed, like from 1950 backwards. It was just amazing. Um, and TD Bank, also the bank that helped fund it and gave me a line of credit for my magazine. And that's not why I'm here today, but that just so happened to be. And can we please just give a big round of applause to the best chamber president in the planet, which is Nancy Pleger. Thank you very much. You better not all right, Nancy said I got to applaud everybody, all the chamber presidents. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy, very much. Thank you, Ramon. And our next awardee, unfortunately, is not able to be here, and I will explain to you why. 
But Elizabeth Velez is the president of the Velez Organization, which is a second generation construction firm uh, started in 1972 by her father, Andrew Velez. Elizabeth has successfully earned the position as one of the integral principals of the organization, as well as a supporter and leader of diversity and economic development and business issues facing the construction industry. To her credit are hundreds of projects which have come to fruition under her direction, including 600 units of housing made affordable by state and federal grants in the Bronx and Harlem, and over $2 billion of significant educational, health care, and large-scale projects throughout New York City's five boroughs. In addition to project management and involvement and corporate responsibilities, Elizabeth is a staunch supporter and advocate for diversity and procurement and employment. She has participated in seminars, talk shows, and been quoted in publications throughout the state. And she and I serve together on the MWBE Advisory Council in the New York City Department of Small Business Services in the previous administration, which was focused on helping move the MWBE procurement needle forward. Currently, Elizabeth is active on several boards, including the New York City Mentorship Advisory Board, the Diversity Advisory Boards of the New York City Controller Scott Stringer, New York State Department of Transportation, New York City School Construction Authority, and the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, as well as many other organizations. She has received numerous awards from business groups, and last year she was invited to the White House for a Women in Transportation Roundtable Forum with the Secretary of Transportation, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, and senior advisors to President Obama. And Elizabeth has been honored by an eclectic group of organizations for her efforts in diversity and human rights as well. So Elizabeth isn't with us tonight because she was invited to participate on a tour to Israel and is not able to be with us to accept the award, but sends her thank you and also sends Gus Velez to accept the award for her. Gus, where did you go? There, there we go. I'm uh, so proud of Elizabeth, as is her entire family, as a second generation entrepreneur. Uh, I'm just going to say what she would say if she was speaking. And the first thing she would do is thank her parents who are here, Andrew and Lois. <laughs> for giving her the possibility of developing uh, a ego that is charming but very tough. She's graceful and poised but doesn't forget anything in any business transaction. Uh, I'm assuming she'll be receiving awards in the future and you'll get an opportunity to judge for yourself. But I want to thank you all for this and I'm very proud of seeing five chambers of commerce come together to honor their members and to honor their <laughs> entrepreneurs. It is that kind of leadership that is absolutely necessary for minority and women-owned businesses to advance in New York. Don't leave it to the legislation. Don't leave it to the legislators. You have to make it definitely certain to the elected officials that if they don't provide you with the opportunities that you're entitled to, they can expect your support in the future. TD Bank deserves a shout out because they have an aggressive and special small business program. And I guess because they're the new bank on the block, I think they're beating out all the other major banks. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Nancy, and congratulations to Ramon, and we send our regards to Elizabeth in Israel. 
Now we move to Queens, and we're joined this evening by the Executive Director of the Queens Chamber of Commerce, Jack Friedman, to present the Queens honorees. Jack. Thank you so much. So why would this event be special for Queens? Well, first off, Queens is the most diverse county in the United States, perhaps the world. We speak over 150 languages, we represent over 132 countries, and our small businesses are majority operated by first generation and second generation immigrants. So to be here tonight to honor MW businesses, minority owned businesses, is just perfect for what we're all about. Now, a lot of you have thanked the Chambers of Commerce, but we're here to serve you, and we count on your support to help us do what we do. Um, working with small businesses, women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, disadvantaged businesses, local businesses, making sure you get procurement opportunities and job opportunities and the technical support and help that you need to access capital to help see your businesses grow is what we're all about. But without you, we couldn't do any of it. So you should be applauding yourself tonight. I also want to introduce um, our first Vice President, Terry Thompson, from our board of directors who's here tonight. Thank you, Terry. And we, you know, it was interesting in choosing the honorees tonight. Um, we have so many wonderful businesses to look to, so many wonderful, strong women entrepreneurs and minority entrepreneurs, but these two really stood out. And I'll tell you why. Our first honoree came here from Hong Kong in the early 1990s. He started off in Manhattan at Madison Street, 850 square feet, probably just, you know, smaller than most of the apartments we live in. Um, with a local printing shop. Moved to Broome Street, and in 2007, proudly moved to Queens County. Um, business is called GM Printing, and he's the owner and founder of the business. K.Y. Choi has been an influence everywhere he's been. When he worked in Chinatown, he was a member of the, China, the Chinatown Partnership. Now that he's in Queens, he's involved with the, Chien, the Queens Chamber Board Directors. And KY is a special individual. He really cares about his clients. He really cares about what he does. He's a prime example of a first generation immigrant coming here and making good. Now he has over 18,000 square feet in Long Island City and does a tremendous amount of business. Printing the program you see tonight, the newspaper that the Queen's Chamber sends out every month. KY um, is an MWB certified business, does business with New York State, New York City, received a tremendous amount of support from the uh, Department of Small Business Services and learned as he went along. He speaks on entrepreneurship, he speaks about MWB certification and procurement opportunities, and about small business management. So for these and many other reasons, I'd like to call up K.Y. Choi to give him his award. Where are you, K.Y.? Good evening, everybody. We are so proud that we are given this award. Well, I'm KY. My last name is Chow. Just a little bit collection on myself. Well, I don't have an English name yet, although I've been over 20 years in America already. Well, but I get a stay by the name of Kentucky. The ship start with the KY. And I tell you that, I get a very sexy portal by the name of KY. So you never forget me. Okay? <laughs> Uh, for the time being, you know, when I asked by Jack to deliver a speech, well, he said, well, I am so scared because there's so many government officials over here and respectable audience over here. I'm not good at, a good speaker. But anyway, he said, just 30 minutes, 30 seconds. I'm sad. I'm glad by myself because he's not asking me to speak in three minutes. I wish that I've killed 10, 10 seconds already. <laughs> now, uh, 
Coming back to the uh, thank you notes, first of all, I deeply feel that the honor doesn't come from me. My job, my business is a delegated job, a teamwork. So I am very happy that I accept this honor on behalf of my team. That's why tonight, I bring along my PPS guy. I bring along my plan manager. I bring along my supervisor in the binary. I would like them to acknowledge their award. Please stand up to, have, to acknowledge their award. They are the back over there. Please. Secondly, I would like to thank I bring along my 7-Eleven. The 7-Eleven is not a convenient shop. Well, she is my wife. She worked for me seven, you know, seven, morning, seven o'clock in the morning, worked at 11. This is my 21st year. So deep down in my heart, I would like to say my big thank you for my wife, Ivy. Ivy, where you are. <laughs> and thirdly, well, of course, TD Bank is very important because he acknowledged the accomplishment of the small business, the contribution to the economy. I am very grateful for that. And on the other hand, I would like to say thank you for the government agents to help me to go for today. When I was being kicked from out Chinatown, I lost my lease. I go to SBS. They show me how to wait to look for my own building. He gave me a loan over three, four million dollars to get the acquisition loan for my building, so I can get a 13,000 square feet. And he gave me a construction loan to expand it to another 18,000 square feet, 5,000 square feet to become 18,000 square feet. And he gave me the machine loan. And he walked me through with SBS, NYCDC to get the 504 loan. I'm so thankful for SBS. Thank you. <laughs> and lastly, and lastly, deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart, I would like to say a thank you to all the small business entity. Why I am saying that? Because the, the city account for the small business entity account for 70% of the total employment. They are the economic engine of New York City. They were able to give a new job to job to the new immigrant. They don't have, they don't speak English. They don't have the skill. They were able to take away their employment, to eliminate their, their unemployment and benefit from the city, okay? They were able to give the job more competitive way and better service, you know? Without them, we cannot have a better economy. I would like to say thank you for the, all the small businesses in New York City to give us a better place to live, to a better place for the next generation to realize American dream. Thank you very much for the small business. Thank you. Thank you. KY wanted to thank us in Cantonese and Mandarin also, but I think we got it. So. <laughs> Rise above, make a mark, get noticed. If you talk to people who deal with advantages and deal with Fran Biedemann Gross, the executives who come as her clients that's what, they tell, that's what they'll tell you they get from Fran. Fran's a special woman. She started a business in the early 90s with her husband, a small local printing business, and she was known as the printing princess. Um, she had a you know, very successful little business. Uh, they did a lot of good work, uh, but sadly her husband passed away in 2001. But that didn't stop Fran because Fran's a strong, strong entrepreneur woman. And instead of you know, getting down, she got up and she rose above and became now was a multi-million dollar company handling national clients in the manufacturing, retail, commercial, and not-for-profit sector. Now, she's not a printing princess, she's, she's a strategista. And when you see her, you also see she's a fashionista. <laughs> but Fran's company advantages gets you noticed. They got the chamber noticed, they rebranded the chamber uh, and, and taught all of us at the chamber, how we should be talking about ourselves, telling our members that, you know, by joining the chamber, they get more and they net more. Fran is a graduate of the MIT Entrepreneurial Program. 
a proud graduate of the uh, Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, which I believe uh, Paisley has five honorees here tonight. An amazing, amazing program. And she's very involved with EO, um, um, Entrepreneurs Organization, where she runs her MWB efforts. She's also a member of the Queen's Chamber Board of Directors. So now Fran runs a multi-faceted agency beyond printing, marketing, branding, and she's just an incredible person, gives back to the community. I'd like to welcome Fran Biederman Gross up here to receive her award. Wow, <laughs> what an honor. TD Bank, thank you for being so aggressive in understanding how the entrepreneurial community and its diversity is so incredibly important to this New York City economic engine. To, my, to the other chambers, it's so incredible to be recognized um, fearlessly for the efforts that we, I don't know, for all the things that we do. But the truth of the matter is that I couldn't get here by myself. And I have to really acknowledge my team who are also here because I'm just one person doing multifacets, tons of different things. And every day, I don't know, we dream a little bit bigger. And every day, we do a little bit more. And it's because of the expertise of my team and all the diversity that they bring. I want to thank my husband for really understanding that there's no such thing as work-life balance. <laughs> because you are truly an incredible support. And most importantly, to my father. Because he always said to me that I'm my own best investment. And I have to consist consistently persist because I can always take 10% more. If it wasn't for those voices in my head, I definitely would not be here tonight. And I really really hope that I'll be continue to be a role model, not only for women and minority-owned businesses, but for the chamber. Because after all, you won't get more. You won't net more if you get more. I don't know. I think I messed that up. <laughs> it sounds good. Congratulations. Congratulations to Fran and to KY. We definitely will not forget your name. <laughs> right now, <laughs> right now, I'd like to bring up, uh, we, we have two awards uh, to give to this evening to someone in the field of IT and also in the spa industry. Very diverse, again, a lot of diversity here today. And to do that, present, make that presentation, I'd like to bring up the president of the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce, Linda Baran. Last but not least, Staten Island, the best slice of the Big Apple. <laughs> no, no, fine. Anyway, I actually, um, I would also like to thank our sponsors tonight, uh, TD Bank and all of the sponsors, but there's somebody I'd like to thank especially, and that's Nancy Plager from the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, this was really Nancy's brainchild to, to bring this event together, and she did a lot of work behind the scenes, and, and we all plugged to help, but she's really responsible for this event. So a big round of applause to Nancy. And I want to welcome you. Uh, you know, combined, we have thousands of members. I would say probably over eight to 10,000 members citywide. Um, and this is just a small representation of all the people that the, the five chambers represent. So we are a strong uh, coalition, and we intend to get stronger. And, and we'd like to, we, what we do like to do is get together and bring our members together to network a lot more so they can do business with each other. So you'll see more and more events as we move forward. Uh, and it's really great because all four of my colleagues are wonderful to work with. Um, I'd like to also. Uh, just uh, welcome everybody here tonight, and thank you all for supporting the Chambers, because if it wasn't for all of our members, uh, we wouldn't be able to do the important work that we do. Um, I'd like to ask my, um, my chair, my new chair of the Chamber this year, starting January, Anna, Anna Marie Gentili from Angeli, and Julie and Gentili, to come down and join me as well. And I'd like to ask my two honorees to come up. 
I have uh, Doreen Zaya of Relax on Cloud9 and Wayne Roy of Troynet. And while they're finding their way down, I just want to acknowledge um, there are two people here that we work very closely with in partnership, and that's Loretta Caldwell from the Staten Island Bach Business Outreach Center, and they do a lot of the certifications on Staten Island, and my good friend Dean Balsamini from the Small Business Development Center, because without our partners, we wouldn't be who we are, too. So come on up. So I'm going to start with you, Doreen. So Doreen, you know, reading your bio, uh, Doreen, as, as was stated, she owns a spa, it's called Relax on Cloud9, and it was uh, started in 1995. And she actually started giving dollar minute massages at the Staten Island Mall. <laughs> I didn't know that until I read your bio. And, and she started from that modest venture, and she's grown her business um, over the years, about 18 years now. And uh, one of the things about um, Doreen is she actually has a beautiful, beautiful location. She took an old Victorian home and renovated it and opened her business there on Staten Island. So when you go there, it's very, very relaxing and very, very enjoyable. And she takes all of the stress out of life. Uh, and she has a wonderful team. And one of the things I admire about Doreen is she really, really takes care of her employees and she believes in her team. Um, she has uh, really helped the chamber. She's come out and she's advocated on behalf of businesses on Staten Island. She networks, she gets involved. She's involved in the Bucks Business Network. She's received numerous awards. She's received the Lewis R. Miller Leadership Awards, the American Express Open Mind for Business. Um, and she's just an extraordinary person. Um, and she really strives to do the best that she possibly can and it's you can see the hard work I've, I've, I've known her for quite some time and I've seen her expand her business I've seen her reduce her business in str struggling times and then really bloom so I just would like to congratulate you Doreen you're, you're a wonderful entrepreneur and we're proud to have you as part of our Chamber of Commerce Well, hello, everybody. Linda, thank you very much. Um, I opened in 1995, so May will be 20 years. And uh, I joined the chamber right away. And I joined the chamber right away because Staten Island had no spas. And I was concerned what the consumer would think we were really doing at the Staten Island Mall. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew that if you were a member of the chamber, that you had some, some uh, prestige, and so, uh, the consumer would have confidence. And, and I have been a member for, for almost 20 years then now as well. Um, we have advocated for small business. I'm very appreciative. I have utilized every service that the chamber has had uh, in growing my business, as well as the Small Business Development Center from the beginning, writing a business plan, to looking for a loan, which we secured through their help. Um, you know, and I'm very, very appreciative. TD Bank, I'm trying you next because uh, I've gotten loans from others, and I, it sounds like you're the, the top for, for small business. Uh, my team is phenomenal, and uh, we are mostly women, um, and most of them could work for themselves in their own businesses, but we kind of created a way where they feel like they're working for themselves within Relax on Cloud9. And thanks very much for the friends who came to support me today. And thank you all the chambers. We appreciate what you do. You're out there fearlessly fighting for us, and uh, we do appreciate it. Thank you. My good friend Wayne Roy, come on over here. <laughs> so Wayne Roy is the CEO of Troynet. It's a strategic business consulting firm that utilizes technology to shape the way the modern era does everyday business. Now Wayne is actually our computer consultant at the Chamber. He really um, exemplifies somebody who works hard every single day to do the right thing for the local businesses. Um, he has, you know, bettered himself. He's another um, graduate of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, and I know that's not an easy program to go through because we have a number of members who have done that. Uh, and actually, one of the things, too, that, that people don't always know about you is all the children that you have and your family. So he kind of balances as well, and I just want to acknowledge his wife, Anita, over there, and also the three children are here tonight, the only children in the audience, Giovanni, Julia, and Gennaro. Welcome, and congratulations to your dad. So without further ado, I'd like to congratulate you, Wayne. You're a very, very deserving award. Love you.
Yeah, she still is. I know why. <laughs> Just so you know, nobody told me I had to say anything today. Okay? <laughs> so I have no crib notes like the other gentlemen. So I'm going to wing it. I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce, the Flower Chamber of Commerce. Linda, you know you're special to me. You are. TD Bank for having this event. But I'd like to thank somebody else that's special to me. Honey, it's not you today. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been asked in the past, why did I want to be an entrepreneur? What made me become an entrepreneur? And I remember back to a story that I read. It was about S.B. Fuller. S.B. Fuller um, grew up in poverty, and he wound up being an extraordinarily successful black entrepreneur in the 1900s. And he was being interviewed. And they asked him, Mr. Fuller, why do you think that you were born poor? And he said, because my father did not have the desire for anything else. That was my turning point. I said, what am I going to be? What's my exemplar I'm going to be for my children? So I'd like to thank my children, my muse, my motivation, my motivators, Giovanni, Gennaro, and Julia, Julia. You're the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. We have to remember the whys of why we do what we're doing. Thank you. Congratulations, Wayne and Doreen. I'm sorry. And those are the three beautiful little ones I saw on the way in. I figured they were just, you know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna receive an award tonight. I'm sure they will in a few years as the future entrepreneurs, as Wayne said. Um, I'd like to give all of the honorees, let's give them all a huge round of applause for all their efforts. And I want to thank all of you for all of your endeavors in contributing to our city and to the economy of our city. We also want to thank sponsors TD Bank, Con Edison, and UPS. Thank you so much for supporting this event and for your continued support of the small business community. And thank you for inviting me to be your MC this evening. It's wonderful to learn about all these wonderful entrepreneurs this evening. And I know we'll be hearing so much more about all of them and many more in the years ahead. So we hope to see you again next year, whether it's in Manhattan or rather in the Bronx, Brooklyn or Queens or Staten Island. We'll see where it is. I don't know, it'll be a little fight for who will host the next one. But either way, I look forward to it and to all of the success that I know that we will be learning about that evening as well. So thank you very much. <laughs>